welcome to another episode of the Twenties Wife series. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you guys some of the realities, some of the experiences I've had and my reality as a mom of two under two at the age of 24. Yes, I became a mom of two at the age of 24. And I had my second baby when my first baby was still one year old. So guys, I'll be sharing with you guys basically like everything I've had to deal with on their part, on my own part, like everything, the drama, the experiences, both the sad and the happy moments. So please stay tuned because this video will be of interest to you. If you know you've not subscribed up to this moment, please ensure to do so by clicking on the subscribe button. It's totally free and also turn on that notification bell beside it so that you can get notified as soon as I drop a new video. Thank you. Now, this is coming from a Gen Z mom. So if you know you are a Gen Z in the house, please let me know in the comment section by dropping hi. So let me know. So I'm giving you a first-hand experience information from a Gen Z mom. When I got pregnant, I was pretty much 22 then when I got pregnant with my first child. I was clueless because I had I have just two brothers and it's just a few age gap in between. And in fact, I knew nothing about babies. Before getting married, before becoming a mother, I didn't even know how to change a diaper, I didn't know how to raise a baby, I didn't know how to clean a baby's poop and all those to feed a baby and all those stuff because I didn't have babies around me. You know, my, my brothers, we all grew up like very close with each other. Like we all grew up close, like the age difference between us is just like very, very close. So there was no one to learn it with and that's just how my life has been. From my home, I went to the university, from university directly into my husband's house and I became a mom, like that's just it. So when I got pregnant with my first child, I being that I am educated by the grace of God, I started to, you know, gather information online from the internet. It is a very great tool. So I would gather information, I would read on what to expect in my first week of pregnancy, in the second week, the third week, the first month, up until the ninth month. So even when I had preeclampsia, I had already known what it was and what to look out for. So when I started to get signs of it, I was like, oh my God, is this happening to me? But life happens guys so i knew the choices to make and all those stuff that was during my pregnancy stage my mom knew that i was a novice when it comes to handling babies so she made sure that she was around one month before i put to bed so my mom came around for the for the postnatal care which we call omugwa in Igbo. the postnatal care she came for it like one month before because she knew of course i couldn't even hold a newborn baby so when i had my child is a boy when i had my first son Oh my god it was love at first sight even while he was in the womb i would connect with him i had read on why it is good for you to bond with your child by communicating with him even while in the womb so i would tell him things and pray you know and proclaim positive affirmations on him and all those stuff so when i had him when i beheld him for the first time it was love at first sight but i had this fear what fear is that? Now, I had this fear of not becoming a good mom because, to be honest with you, I was clueless. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what, how to go on about it. So, I was clueless. I had this fear that, oh, that I want to be the best mom for this little boy. I want to be the, like, I want to be a good example. I want to be that good, that exemplary mother figure that he would grow up in, always remembering in a positive light. So, I had this fear in me. And although I did not allow this fear to overshadow me, to overcome me, so I... I turned this fear into a zeal to become better, into a zeal to, you know, to acquire knowledge. So I went to the internet and I started to read and all those stuff. So for the postnatal care, normally the, my mom was supposed to stay for three months or even less. But because she knew that I couldn't find my way around, guys, I didn't even bait my baby up until it was four months. So I didn't even know how to bait a newborn baby at that time. So she knew that, oh, that I couldn't get my way around this baby. So she had to stay for five months. Yes, she stayed for five months with me. And for this five months, she was putting me through, you know, teaching me on how to do this, how to do that. Even when it was time for her to leave, that was when the reality dawned on me that, wow, I'm finally doing this at the age of 22 with no help. Now, I live with my husband alone. I don't have a help. I don't even have a close relative around where we live. Because my mom, we stay in Abia States. In the eastern parts of nigeria and my mom they stay in the western part of nigeria so that's like ours that's like distance apart so and 
if she leaves i don't have anybody that would come you know to put me through and all those stuff i only have my husband but you know that mother figure there are some things that i need to do there's a position i need to take in my son's life i was just scared but i have to turn this fear into the quest for knowledge and guys when my mom left i cried a lot yes i cried a lot in fact for the first month that my mom left, what I'll do, because I was exclusively breastfeeding, if my husband leaves, when my husband leaves for work, what I'll do is to carry my son and stay and just sit in the sitting room, you know, with his mouth to my breast and he will suckle and suckle. If he sleeps, I'll quickly draw, I'll go to the bed, you know, drop him gently, go and eat and then sit and wait for him to wake up and I'll carry him, we'll play, I'll discuss with him and all those stuff. So this was pretty much what my routine was as a mom of one then. You know, as time went on, I began to become more comfortable around him and to know that, okay, I need to do this. Now, part of where my fear stemmed from was I knew that my parents, we are good parents that my parents you know they did a good job on us because of course i'm here today and i'm proud of the woman that i am today all thanks to my parents being there for us but i wanted to be a better parent for my mom and being that the, the times are changing like this generation we need to do better as parents so i was conscious of that and i knew that i had to be intentional about parenting so i just knew that okay that i needed to do something different and when i started to get comfortable with my son it, it was around eight months nine months and it was because Becoming conscious of his environment. One thing that I know that most of us Gen Z lack, except we have exception, exceptional parents who did a very good job, is compassion. Like we lack empathy and compassion. And I was keen on seeing that I raise up children who would show compassion, who would be compassionate, who would be kind, who would show empathy, you know, who would know that it is normal for you to be human. And also to raise up a man that would also know that it is normal to be human. By showing your soft side, that showing your soft side doesn't mean that you're weak or that you're soft, but it's just to show that you are human. So I was conscious on the character, on the character aspects, you know, on raising positive, on impacting positive values, on raising up a human that would show appreciation. You know, this are African mentality, of course we are African. I was conscious on not raising a human, you know, a child that would have this entitlement mentality i was conscious on imbibing appreciation you know gratitude empathy compassion and i was also conscious i was also intentional on raising up a child that would not be boxed into these gender roles you know that the woman is supposed to be in the kitchen and then the man is not supposed to be in the kitchen the man is not supposed to know anything about that so i was very much intentional on raising a son that will grow up into an all-rounder man somebody that will be proud of that i would look at and say that yes thank you god i did a great job so i was just reading up you know gathering knowledge and learning and unlearning because i was a novice now at this point i think I, was, I didn't really have any issues, you know, taking care of one son, of one child, because when my husband would go to work, I was a stay-at-home mom then. So at this point also, I decided to take up a skill. So I went to learn how to sew. You know, being a focused person, I knew that I just needed to get this thing done with. So a maximum of three months, I had gone there and I learned everything I needed to learn, you know, on the physical training. And I came back and started learning online. This was while I had one child. Now, fast forward to 2021, I got pregnant. My son was just a little over a year. I got pregnant and with my second baby. And guys, from the beginning of that pregnancy, I knew that our lives that my life was going to change because it wasn't going to be the business of me and my son alone because we have that bond that bond that you would be so jealous of i and my son so but at that time i knew that oh he's going to have a sibling and i need to teach him also how to share i need to you know to teach him the spotless the pure sibling love so while i was while my second baby was still in the womb i would call my first son and then tell him explain to him even though he wasn't he, i it was less than two years, but I knew that he could understand me, even though he couldn't really understand everything. But I would tell him that his sibling, his sister, because he has a sister now, that his sister is in my stomach and very soon she will come and meet us and that he should, he should take care of her, he should love her, he should learn how to share and all those things and that he shouldn't, you know, just teaching him things, just telling him every day we would communicate with, with the baby in my womb, we would play with her, we would pray for her and all those stuff. So finally, when my baby came, I thank God, like, he actually welcomed my first son, my son, he welcomed his baby sister very well with like with positive vibes and I was so happy and actually grateful that okay, 
at least I have won on that aspect. And up to now, that sibling bond is still there. He always looks out for her, he always you know, plays with her, and even whenever he goes to school and comes back, when he sees her, he wants to hug her and all those stuff. And even also she, she also, like, she knows that this is my brother. Whenever she hasn't seen him for long and he comes back, she also crawls, like, you know, crawls to hug him and all those stuff. So, in that aspect, at least, it is going on well. Now, all these things I've been narrating, they, they feel like, like mushy mushy love, right? That everything is going on, it is a smooth ride. Guys, it is not a smooth ride because I've had to sacrifice a lot of things now being that i'm still young i'm in my early 20s i just clocked 25 so i'm in my mid 20s right now but i i had my two babies in my early 20s in less than two years i've had to sacrifice a lot one i've had to sacrifice my career because i'm in my reproductive years so i've had to sacrifice my career and sacrificing of career also that one it is it is a big one for me it's a big deal for me but i know that at least when they get to a certain age of being independent i can also go back to my career but i've had to you know sacrifice my movement because of course there are some things there are some places you would want to go to there are some things you want to do and when you remember that you have a newborn an infant and then a struggling toddler to go with you will just have to you know die the idea you just need to kill it so i've had to sacrifice a lot my time my energy there are some days when it's as if i regret doing this i'll be honest there are some days i would cry and cry and cry i have a teaching job which i took on just because of i just just because i want to be there for my kids you know and i feel like a teaching job at this point in time is the best type of job for me because i get to, to spend time with my kids and also have time for them so i feel like okay a teaching job even though it is below what i want to do but i'm okay with it as far as i get to go out and interact with others because believe you me staying at home with a toddler and an infant like for 24 hours for weeks for days for weeks for months it can mess up with your mental health so i just took on this job you know to be going out at least so that when i interact with people i'll know that okay for this period of time i'll be outside and for the remaining hours i'll be with my children so i had to learn sacrifice guys motherhood taught me a lot about sacrifice before now i would i would always put myself first you know and then later on when i got married although being that i'm a flexible person i don't find it's difficult doing these things so when i got married i started to put my spouse also first and then when i became a mom i just had to like it just came naturally that whenever i have something to do or i have a plan set out i have to consider my children like in my in my monthly calendar in my daily routine i need to first of all plan about my children you know plan ahead and then they must be favored in that list whenever i want to get things for myself i need to consider that okay my children need this my children need this first before my own need so i've learned to sacrifice a lot of, and i think it is a good thing because of course they are my children if i don't do it for them who will but guys there are days where i regret doing this seriously i'll be honest with you so my first child is a very quiet guy he's a very quiet boy i will i would even call him a recluse he's very smart and very very introverted like he's very quiet he knows when to behave himself when to coordinate himself when to also play when we are when we are at home and all those stuff but for my second daughter she's a handful she's a very fussy baby very hyperactive always wants me to carry her wants me to be there like just wants to restrict me wants to have me for herself she would cry and cry and cry if i drop her just to go and get something just for five seconds you see her shouting all over the place and all those stuff so there are these when she's actually happy and then you know she 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 laughs all through the day but guys on a scale of 10 she cries like 9 over 10 and then she plays 1 over 10 seriously because and then because of because of her fussiness because of her hyperactivity and her restriction and and the way she's restricting me i'll feel that this when i will cry like i would lock myself up and cry and then i will regret starting this at this age because i know that there are so many people there are so many gen z out there you know enjoying their life living their life to the fullest and i'm here stuck with an impact that i feel is not even appreciative of me and all those guys i have even considered giving her out to the orphans like i just want to be very very honest so that you know that there are days when you feel down and it is normal because one thing that you should know is that these are down times just last for a short period of time and it's good for you to cry it out you know to vent it out so that it doesn't lead to depression or to frustration that you know if it lingers on it might be harmful so whenever 
I'm down like this, whenever I'm frustrated, whenever it feels as if, why did I start this? Whenever it feels like, oh, that these children are not being appreciative of all my sacrifice, all my efforts, all my energy, my time. I just cry it out, you know, I sleep, I, I do things that will just make me, you know, maybe in the next one to two hours, I'll feel okay. But there are days that, there, there are times when this feeling, when this down feeling also lingers on for days. Like, I've had a week during October when, like, for a week I was down. Guys, but... Pre prior to that week, the previous week, I thought I had it all planned out with my toddler and my infants, you know, we were all happy and happy. See, there's something about this motherhood thing. Every day you wake up to a new face, you wake up to a new experience. If you feel like you have it all planned out, it's a lie. The, the, previous, the previous week, I had it all planned out, that, oh, thank God, I'm finally getting a hangover hit and all those things. And then this week came, I was caught on our ways i was caught off guard i was like oh my god why did i why did i do this why did i do that but the good thing about it is that it doesn't last for long even if it lasts a day two days three days maximum four days and i'm out of it and see guys it's a lot it's a lot there are days when i would cry and cry and cry and cry and i'll call my mom she would console me and tell me that see it is a stage it is a phase as much as I derive joy, you know, seeing my children, looking at them, they give me so much joy. There are also days when you would look at them and you will, see, you will be so angry. Like, you'll be like, where did this little humans come from? Like, they just came to frustrate you. Like, and, and my second child is not even making it easy. Like, it's not even making things easy for me at all. But I feel like what, that what this is teaching me is just to teach me the, that humans are different, you know. Just imagine, I like, I had only gentle children, only calm children. I would not actually experience i would not know what other people are experiencing because i feel like there are so many mothers out there also that have children that are hyperactive children that are you know that are that that fussy children that are clingy and all those stuff and that that stress the hell out of them because guys i'm so stressed it's even telling on me like in my short years on earth i've never been so stressed like this i look so emaciated i look so stressed and this one is not even about feeling well because there's there's something about having that rest that body rest and rest of mind you know if you're feeding and then you're resting well you know you will be fresh you will be glowing you'll be shining you know you'll be looking so healthy but guys i don't even have rest like legitly i don't have rest because of my second baby and being that she that she doesn't even understand little instructions so how do i go about it she doesn't understand if you shout at her if you tell her you tell her something she's looking at you she's doing what is in her mind the next minute so you can't even do anything about it so guys it's a lot it's a lot but i know that it is a face it is a passing face but what i don't feel comfortable about is when my fellow moms who know how this thing is who know that okay that i'm in my productive phase i'm in my productive phase and then children in this age range they tend to stress the hell out of someone when they when they tend to make me feel bad you know when the body shame me and all those things that are you sure you're, you're even feeding well are you sure you're this are you sure you're that are you even are you even taking care of yourself and all those stuff you know i feel bad when this is coming from my fellow mothers from from my fellow women because i feel like you have been there before you know you should show some empathy which is why i said that I need to teach my children, like I need to teach them better, I need to, you know, I need them to be well prepared for the future generation. If you know you have a toddler or an infant or you have kids in that are still in their dependent age and then you're being stressed out, or please, I would like to know, how do you handle them? Share your experiences with me, please, in the comment section. I will be sure to reply. If you have any advice or you have any questions, you know, on how to go around this thing, because we learn every day. We learn to be good mothers every day. And in case you're feeling, in case you're feeling down, you know, in your quiet time that you're not being the best for your children, that it seems you're you're throwing, you're venting out on them too much, or you're not giving them the time, the energy, you know, as much as you want to. Please, I'm here to assure you that you are doing your very best. You are doing the very best that you can. And you learn every day. You are enough for your children. They cannot ask for any other mother. They cannot ask for any better person to be their mother than you. So just keep up at what you do. And very soon, they would outgrow this dependent stage. Because that is what is my consolation. I know that very soon, I'm doing it now. I just have to sacrifice it. Which, if we don't do it now at this early stage, we'll still do it later at the 
at the later stage so is it that you choose your battles now or you choose them later but it is a battle that needs to be fought because our parents our mothers also did this with us so guys i'm just i just thought to share my reality the you know my experiences being a mother of two under 24 while my mates are there you know my fellow gen z are there cruising the world you know taking on good jobs pursuing their career i'm here stuck with my infants and my toddler but i know that everyone has their own time frame and i know that this is mine and my time frame is perfect for me so guys if you know you found this video informative and interesting please give this video a thumbs up my baby girl is awake and guys it's just 5 it's 5 a.m and my baby girl is awake so i need to go and attend to her guys motherhood calls mother duty calls so i'll see you guys in the next one please ensure to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up also drop your comments in the comment section and please share this video with other gen z moms so we can get to know ourselves you know we can get to exchange our experiences and ordeals and guys i'll see you in the next one bye for now